Okay, now we're going to do division properties with exponents. So it's just the opposite of what we did yesterday. Instead of multiplying, we're going to divide. And if you'll remember, when I multiplied exponents that had the same base, I had to add the exponents. But since I'm going to divide, which is the opposite of multiplication, when I divide exponents with the same base, I'm going to keep the base, but I'm going to subtract the exponents. It's just the opposite of what we did yesterday. I'm going to show you with this first example why we have to move things that have negative exponents. This division example is going to make perfect sense. If I write this in expanded form, so x squared is x times x, and then on the bottom, x to the fifth, I have five of them. And if you'll go based on what you know about simplifying and reducing things, these x's will cancel each other and these x's will cancel each other, leaving me with three x's in the bottom. But I don't have anything in top except if you know that when these cancel each other it's because they made a one. So you have a one on top and at three x's on the bottom so it's x to the third. That's what this equals. But if you do this following the rule and you subtract the exponents, you keep the base, which is x, and then you subtract two minus five. Well, if you know your integer rules and you think about them, 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. Well, I can't leave it as negative 3 because I can't have a negative exponent, so I have to rewrite it as 1 over x to the third. This is the reason why negative exponents become written this way. Because when I write it all out in expanded form, everything cancels. I have nothing left on top, but I still have stuff remaining in the denominator. But this is the why. When I told you before, you know, I was going to be able to tell you why in a couple days, there is the why, and hopefully it makes a little more sense now. But the first answer to the first one is 1 over x to the third. You can write it in expanded form, or you can subtract exponents. So the next example. 3 to the 8th over 3 squared. My base is 3, so I'm going to keep my base, and I'm going to subtract my exponents. Well, 8 minus 2 is just 6. But if you want to really simplify this all the way down, you want to find out what 3 to the 6th power is, you take out your calculator, you type in 3 to the power 6, and you get that it equals 729. So I subtracted my exponents, and then I went ahead and simplified down. Now the next problem has coefficients in front of the bases. So I have negative 3 and 15 are coefficients. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this negative 3 over 15 and reduce that because it's a fraction I can simplify. I can divide them both by 3 and end up with negative 1 over 5. I don't know why I made my line so long. It was really unnecessary. There we go. Then my base is an x. And I can subtract my exponents just like I did with the other two examples, and 7 minus 3 is 4. So I reduced my coefficients down to a number, you know, a simplified version, and then I subtracted exponents with my base. So I get negative 1 fifth x to the fourth. If you want to write this in a simpler form, you could also put the x to the fourth up top. So you have negative 1 x to the fourth over 5. These are the same thing. Um, if you want to leave it like this, it's totally okay with me. If you want to switch it to this, that's totally okay with me too. They mean the same thing. All right? So let's practice a little bit more. If you look at the next example, it's this one up here with the A's and the B's. I have A to the 5th, B to the ninth over AB all to the 4th. And so now we have to go back to what we did yesterday with the multiplication properties of exponents, and we have to simplify this. And so you should remember that I have to distribute this 4 to everything inside. So this really is A to the 5th, B to the ninth over A to the 4th, B to the 4th. Now you can subtract exponents with like bases. So I have my A's, and 5 minus 4 is 1, so it's just A to the 1st. And then on my b's, I have 9 minus 4, which is 5. Now, if you want to put the 1, you can. If you want to leave off the 1 and just write a, b to the 5th, they're the same thing. You won't see it with the 1 written on a test or in an example, but they do mean the same thing, and one is not more right than the other. Okay, I want to go to this next example down here at the bottom, the long one down here. It's very similar to the one that we did a few minutes ago. I'm going to take, I've got coefficients and then I have all these bases. Don't worry about moving negative exponents until after you have done the division part. Save the moving of negatives until the very last step at the very end of your simplification. So we're going to divide coefficients first. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 
Then I have to do my A's. I have a to the fourth, and this is a to the first, even though you don't see it, so I'm gonna subtract four minus one is to the third. And then my B's, I have b to the first over four. Now think about this for just a minute, because I'm gonna subtract exponents, so I'm gonna to have to do one minus negative four. And if you'll remember integer rules, this really means one plus four. And the same thing is gonna happen with my C. I'll simplify this down in just a second because I have negative three and positive three. Well, y'all should be able to tell me that negative three minus three, it's not gonna be zero, so don't jump to that conclusion. Here's what you end up with. So we're gonna go ahead and simplify from here. I already had my A to the third because that was easy, but this one minus negative four really became one plus four, so I have B to the fifth power. So you gotta still watch your integers just like before. And then my C, negative three minus three is really a negative six. It is not zero. It's only gonna be zero if I'm adding those together, but when I subtract it, I get negative six. Now I can take care of the negative exponent. This C to the negative six has to go to the denominator. So three, A to the third, B to the fifth stays in the numerator. The C to the sixth drops down here to the denominator. There's my simplified version of that expression. So now let's talk about this next question about the population, the, the word problem I have here. You don't really need to write it down unless you just want to, um, but it was a, uh, it is a scientific notation question, but as you will notice, the scientific notation numbers didn't show up. So we're gonna make this a warm up tomorrow and we'll come back to it. I think that's very interesting. Just cross that off. We'll do this one tomorrow as a warm up since the numbers didn't want to show up in my problem. Sorry about that. Just kidding. Let's practice dividing some more and simplify some expressions. Now this is gonna put everything we have done all together all in one big problem. So this first one, I have all of this taken to the power of three, which means I gotta distribute this three to everything in here, the whole numerator, the whole denominator. So I end up with two to the third power because the three has to go with the two. And then I multiply these exponents so I get x to the ninth. And then in the denominator, the three also has to get distributed to those, so I get y to the third, z to the third. Well, two to the third you should know is eight. So you have eight x to the ninth over y to the third, z to the third. And since I now know have, don't have any like bases, I'm done. There was no division that had to be done in this problem at all. I was basically simplifying using what I have already learned, as I don't have any like bases. The next problem is very much the same. You have all of this taken to the fifth power, so I gotta distribute my little five all the way through. So this becomes a to the fifth. And then my b becomes to the 20th because I have to multiply four times five is 20. And then same down here, I end up with c to the 10th because I have to multiply two times five and d to the 15th because I have to do three times five. Again, I don't have any like bases going on. I can't simplify any further. I'm done with that problem. Now the next problem, this one, this two fifths to the negative three, I like this problem a lot. Because it looks really complicated, it's not very complicated, but you will overthink it. The first thing I want you to do is distribute this negative three exponent to everything you see. So this really becomes two to the negative three over five to the negative three. And you know from talking about negative exponents that they're not okay, so I've gotta move. I gotta do a little switcheroo here. The two, has to come down here to the denominator, but the five has to come up to the numerator. So I'm really just gonna flip this over like I'm gonna do a reciprocal and my exponents are gonna become positive. So I end up with five to the third over two to the third, then I'm gonna actually do the math and get 125 over eight. I like that one because it's just a little switcheroo kind of an issue so that you don't have any negative exponents left over. So let's do two more. This one's very similar to the one we just did, only a little, there's, it's just got a little more to it, but everything is taken to the negative two power. So I end up with three to the negative two, x to the negative two, over y to the negative six, because I have to do three times negative two. Now I got all these negatives. It's just like this one up here that we just did. I'm gonna have to just flip flop everything. All of this will have to go down here and this will have to go up here. So I end up with y to the sixth 
over 3 squared x squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, so you have y to the 6th over 9x squared. There's your simplified expression. So one more. Again, all of that is taken to a negative power, which we're, we're going to just go ahead and distribute through. So I get 2 to the negative 2, a to the negative 2, b to the negative 12, because 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, over a to the negative 6, because I had to multiply, b to the negative 2. Now before I go flip-flopping things, I'm going to go ahead and do my subtraction because now I have like bases. I got A's and I got B's. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of my exponents. So I have two to the negative two. Now negative two minus six. If you think about your integer rules, negative two minus six is the same thing as negative two um, plus a negative six, which is going to be negative eight. And then my B, negative 12 minus two becomes negative 14, because it's like saying negative 12 plus negative two. It's that integer leave change change rules that you learned last year in 7th pre-AP. Now I can flip-flop everything. All of this has to go into a denominator, so I end up with 1 over 2 squared, a to the 8th, b to the 14th, and then once I do 2 squared, I get 1 over 4a to the 8th, b to the 14th. And there is my simplified expression for that one. But I think that it is a lot easier if you go ahead and take care of the subtraction first with your division and then worry about negatives as your very, very last step. So some of y'all were trying to combine all of that all in one today, and you don't really need to. You can save moving negatives to the very, very last step. By the way, I just want y'all to know that I think that y'all are doing a really fantastic job. I think things are going really, really well. Um, keep coming to class with your questions. Keep asking your questions, and, and we'll keep on moving. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good evening.